Hey everyone, welcome to Flow Tricks. Today I am not going to be teaching a technique. I thought I'd teach something a little bit different, uh, more of a lecture. Uh, I got a couple of questions asking about, well the basic question is, is how do I make money doing my passion? And that is a huge, huge subject. So I just wanted, I'm, I have no notes, I'm just going to kind of stream over some of the experiences I've had over the last 10 years, things that I feel are a good starting point. So say you've been spinning nunchucks for a couple years, five years, 10 years, it's really hard to say when you're ready. Uh, but then all of a sudden you feel like this itch, like maybe there's more to this like than just a hobby. This video is for you, it's a good starting point. Now when pursuing your passions, and if you wanna take it I'm more seriously, by more seriously I just mean when you wanna take it like more as a business, I mean you can definitely be a serious amateur. Uh, one thing to consider is, do I want to teach or do I want to perform? And I do a little bit of both. Uh, performing actually keeps me more supported than teaching does, but it, it goes up and down. Uh, there's a whole section about teaching, especially if you already uh, are a martial arts instructor, you have kind of an in. I'm not going to go over that today. What we're going to go over is performing. Now performing, whoosh, going into this chapter, there's a gazillion different things ways to start and ways to see things but I think the most important thing before anything is just changing the way that you s approach and see things now does that mean that you're not going to enjoy this as much no not at all but it does mean that sometimes you're going to end up doing things that you may not particularly enjoy because you're building it's kind of like if you if you love building a house you may have to learn plumbing and electrician even though that's not really something you like doing to create the whole house. There's like all these elements and parts. So uh, I think it's important to know that like a lot of times when people want to go to the next level, what stops them from going to the next level is simply that they don't want to do the things they don't feel like doing. And that is the only thing that stops them. And it's a big thing though, because if I were to say today, hey, go get a gig, right? Probably the question in your mind is, how? Like, where do I start? When you don't have any frame of reference, how to secure a gig or how to perform or how to get shows, when there's no frame of reference, what happens is either it becomes way too complicated, it becomes oversimplified, or it becomes uh, this trial and error mad scientist project process, or it becomes a search for answers. Like, how do you start? Uh, I think it's really important, especially when you watch performers or when you are when you're trying to make this work that when you look at other people who are successful it's really really important not to oversimplify what you're seeing because again if you don't have a frame of reference for all the little nuances it takes to create what this person has created it's very easy to just look at it very broadly and say oh this this easy like I, I can get a get you know it's like but there's actually a lot of things that go into play for instance the way you present yourself the image the way you talk about it do you have your contracts? Are you insured? There's a lot of different things. Now, all this is not coming into play yet, but that is just important to think about. One is your approach. Uh, one is being able to do things you don't always want to do or to delegate because that is the best way, but that usually costs money. And then uh, the other one is also just to observe others and to see what the successful are doing and to not simplify, to really look in and learn and listen. It is so important. Even people that you may or may not like, you have something you can learn from every single person in this planet. They have at least one thing that they can teach you that's good, that can make you a better person for tomorrow. Better being closer to where you want to be in your life. Uh, another thing that I think is really important is the way that you perceive money. Some people love it too much. Other people hate it to a point where it's obsessive. But money is just a tool. and it's important to have a healthy, a healthy outlook on how you perceive money. To me, money is a means of support. So if I didn't have it, I would be working a full-time job. I, I do this full-time. I love it. Uh, and because I do it full-time and I get enough support, I'm able to make it grow. And I can share it with others. I can bring in other performers and we can work together. So it's nice because I get to inspire other performers. I get to help bring them in. And on the top of that, I get to inspire other people by either teaching them or performing for them. And all of that like comes down to, can I pay the bills with it? Can I get food with it? You know what I'm saying? Can, does it pay for my car? Like, am I able to make this a living? Because otherwise what's going to happen is, is I'm going to work for someone else. And that's why I always say that you should 
you should really try to do things that you don't necessarily want to do because chances are you're going to be working for someone else doing it for someone else or you're going to do it for your dream. So either way, you're going to be working for someone else's dream. That is not to say, too, that any that people that work, like that do this as an amateur or people that don't get paid or people that, that is not to say anything bad about that. But it's just a pure thing that like this is this is kind of how the approach needs to be if you want to if you want to make some some money doing it, and that's basically your approach needs to change from from the amateur or the hobbyist to the professional. Uh, so look at money. If there's a way to look at it, in my eyes, it's a way to support your dream, and I think that's a beautiful way to see it, and that's absolutely true. And when other people see what your vision is and they love it, and they can insert their 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 events with what you're doing, then all of a sudden it supports them. So they're supported because you're supporting them and they provide it back by giving you money, which allows you to continue your dream. So everything works, it's, it's like a win-win situation. Um, now there's a lot, there's, there's so much, and I'm kind of shooting off, off the top of my head right now. I've got like 10 years of mistakes and more mistakes and more mistakes. But that's another one that I, I guess we could talk about is mistakes before you start too. And I'm trying not to get too philosophical because this is kind of more like uh, I'm trying not to get too philosophical and try to give you good information, but some of these approaches are necessary. And one of them is the way you see mistakes. Because uh, I, I can tell you like firsthand that I think a lot of people that start businesses make some really bad decisions. And we all do it. I've done it. And this can be embarrassing. But it's so important to know that you can recover from it. That is often like what makes a successful person, I feel like, and I'm still learning. I, I do not consider myself fully successful. Like I need, there's so much more that I wanna accomplish, but a lot of it is paved with mistakes, especially if, if you don't have a mentor or someone to help you. Making a mistake is like an arrow that helps guide you the direction you do need to go, but it can also cripple you. And a lot of times people focus on the mistake so hard or how the mistake made them feel that they can no longer focus on the lesson and then they quit. And that is more important than anything else because you don't want to lose your passion and you don't like, because that can kill your passion of doing the art altogether if you quit and you have harbor these negative feelings because you've had a bad experience. So it's really important that that you do get knocked down. It's important to get knocked down. It's important to make mistakes and to, to learn to find your resilience so you can push through that because this business is hard. You know, the business is hard. Even the art can be hard. It can be, it can, it, it you know, it's just like life, man, you know? And your ability to get back up each time will only make you stronger and a little bit more accurate. But the, the goal is not to focus on blame, but to focus on the lesson for people, for your own mistakes, um, to keep reading, to keep learning, find books, listen to podcasts, just keep bringing in information, filtering and sifting what is relevant, what is your next step, and then kind of creating those steps until you find your own path. Uh, it's really good to study successful people or people that are doing it because they found a path, but ultimately there's no one way to do this. Like there's so many different ways to do it. So that is kind of the, the preliminaries before you even start because all that needs to shift to some degree. And if it doesn't shift, it'll shift in time. So don't feel bad if you can't like see things differently because that happens with experience. You're, you know, it happens like we can talk all day about making mistakes, but until you actually make one, that is where you have that defining moment. Um, so where do you start? Okay, so you got all that down. Now, what exactly do you want to start doing? First, uh, I guess there's one more pre preliminary that I didn't talk about that I think is important, and that's uh, thinking about turning yourself into how can I serve others? For instance, imagine if I taught YouTube videos and I was showing off, but I wasn't really giving you step-by-step -step instructions how to do any of these tricks, right? That really wouldn't serve you. Like if I was like, hey, check this out. You can do this and you can do this and eh, I'm not really gonna tell you how to do it. It doesn't serve you. You wouldn't watch the video. It does nothing, right? But my goal, like I measure, especially when I teach, the effectiveness is how good my students become. And the more, the better they become, whether they thank me or not, if I see that they're improving because of a video that I made, then I know I've, I've done a good thing. And that in return allows me to create a Patreon page and to get people that appreciate that have been able to make an effect on them and they're able to donate because of that. They'll feel more connected to that donation because I have made a difference in their lives. And yay, we all win, you know? 
<laughs> but that's also the same with performing. So sometimes you may be stuck on a certain look or feel that may not actually be what the client or what a person needs. Now sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. But I think the perfect balance with performing is that you love what you do, but you're also able to translate it over to others so they can feel it too. And that can be different. Sometimes you can you can totally love what you're doing, but it doesn't translate at all to the audience. And that's just because what how something feels inside to you may not always translate over to how what the audience is seeing. And what the audience sees is is going to be how they feel things. What they see and what they hear is how they're going to feel something from what you're doing. So in other words, like if you're really internal and you have a stern face, maybe you're hunched over, but you're doing these amazing tricks and you're feeling it inside, but you're just like, and then you make a mistake and you have this mistake face when you're doing it. And it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> you just have this crazy face. Um, that is how you're communicating to the audience. Even though inside you might be like, oh, I made a mistake, but I'm still really liking what I do, but I feel really awkward. That all translates out. Um, just like how I'm talking to you now. It doesn't matter what I'm thinking inside my head. All that matters is what I'm saying. That's what you're getting right now. And performing is the same way. So when you think about how things look, then you can think about, well, like actors, you know, because actors have certain methods. And to a degree, you're kind of like an actor. Like you wear, hmm, my burritos are done. <laughs> As an actor, you, uh, you're not trying to convey every single emotion that you can possibly create in a movie, but you're trying to convey a certain personality, a certain character. And when you're performing, it's kind of the same thing. Like, I like fire ninjas, I like fierce. Mm. So that's what I choose to be. Uh, I, I'll dress in costume of something that will feel kind of fierce, and then I'll come out there and that's what I'll create. I'll create it with my presence, I'll create it with my body movement and my techniques. All these work together with a cool song, boom, and then maybe some atmospherics and you got yourself a show. Wow, we haven't even gone over anything, like any of the logic yet uh, as to how to do it, but all, all these approaches before you even begin is, I would say, I don't want to say essential because there may be more ways, but to me, that was essential. Getting all those knocked out and it takes a long time before it really starts to feel natural. Okay, so now you're thinking, okay, how can I best serve others and what can I do to make you know others feel good? So, um, Gosh, that comes to another preliminary, and this one is gonna be your self-esteem. It's really important when you're performing uh, to, it's really hard, especially when you first start, you're almost like when you perform, you're asking permission from the audience to approve of you or to appreciate you. And that usually doesn't work. Kind of like if you ever go on a date and that person really wants you to like them, and so they're always checking in with you, and they're saying, hey, you know, do you like me? You know, it's just like, it's awkward, right? And it's kind of the same thing as if you're performing, you don't wanna give the, the energy like, do you like me? I really hope you like me, please like me. Like, this means a lot to me. I mean, that's, I, you can feel that, but the presence that you should create is more of a visionary, like I have this dream, I have this love. And this is more of uh, less, okay, so when you're questioning others and you're, and you're wondering and you let that define you, that's based on fear right? And if you let fear drive you, you, will, you won't even have a good performance. You'll think your performance was horrible, even if you did great. But if you let love, your passion drive you, then all of a sudden it's a different, it's a different approach. All of a sudden now it's like, man, I have this vision and I want to share this with you. Walk with me, pull them in, you know? I just walk with me. Like sometimes, man, I get in front of this camera. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what I'm going to say now, but I know that I want you to walk with me because I have some things that I think are important. And Having something important to say is more important than just talking a lot, right? But I like both, so there you go. <laughs> so it's gonna be the same. Don't ask permission uh, to a degree, I mean, when you're, when you're performing because they already gave that to you by you standing on stage. They gave that to you with their attention. Now it's time to share your world with them and that can be scary. And I definitely know it can be scary, but again, that's gonna be like, those are gonna be the steps that you take. So when you first start performing, when you first start performing, the most important thing is to get to that transition where you no longer think that way. Because until, as, and it's gonna happen, I mean, because as long as you there's any self-esteem that's based within your art, there's gonna be, there's, there's very likely to be questions and problems that come, that arise with that. But eventually you'll be able to rise past that and pull people in on your journey. And that's a great place to be. And it's definitely a place where you're gonna to wanna to be too. So we got that out of the way. Now the next question I think is gonna be on a different video. Uh, but the next question is, okay, I think I have the right mindset, I have the right approach. 
Now, where do I start? So I'm gonna give you the very basics to starting and then we'll, we'll continue it from there. So the very basics is that there's really two ways that you could go. One is you go for the gold. And what I mean by go for the gold is you're gonna go straight to try to, uh, oh, I guess I should say, okay. So you can just try to join a company that already exists and already has entertainment or the others you try to make it yourself. And actually you can do both at the same time. Clause. But if you try to join a company, the nice thing about that is they already have advertisers. They have people working really hard to do things that you don't want to do, so you can just focus on performing. The bad part is you may have to wait in line. There may not be any openings. They may already have people that do what you do. Uh, there's a lot of different things. You're at their mercy. And also, if you start working for them and if you don't have any support on your own, then you're going to be dependent on them. Meaning if they have no more need for you or if they move or if they change ideas for where they want to go, you're going to be hurt by that because you will depend on them to get your gigs. Now, working for yourself is beautiful. And that's the other one. Working for yourself is a beautiful thing, but it is a lot of work, a lot more work. Oh my gosh, it's so much work. But at the same time, it's like, I'm going to build my own house kind of thing, you know? Where as this one might be, I'm living in a hostel. This one is going to be like, I'm, I'm going to build my own. Now, building your own takes a lot of time and you're going to spend a lot of time researching. But in the end, you create your own destiny there. And if, and if you create your own destiny there, the people, the companies are actually going to see that more and they're going to want to hire you more. All of a sudden, there's this synergy that happens where you're rocking out on your own and you're also getting noticed more by companies because they want to work with people that are successful, that have experience, that have gone through the trials so they don't have to go through that with that company. Um, so when you start off on your own though, uh, okay, so let's go over really quick. If you, if you want to join a company, I mean, there's so many different ways to do that, but I think it's really important to have a really amazing video that's very short, very sweet, gets to the point, maybe a minute long, and you have a few good photos and you present yourself well, and if you have a website, great. Um, but with both of them, it's really important to present the actor that you want to be. Can, imagine a movie, right? And if you're in a movie and Han Solo is, is in Star Wars or whatever, um, you don't want to ever see him break character, right? And it's going to be the same thing when you present your, your art to others. If you have this image of what you're trying to sell or create, you don't want to break character. Just like if you're watching a movie, you don't want Han Solo to be, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm sorry, I don't need to eat. And then he starts eating chicken or whatever. And it's like, wait, you're like in outer space. There's no chicken in outer space, you know? Like, but that breaks the character and all of a sudden people start questioning. If you never break character, it, it keeps people on that journey of what you're trying to create in the first place. So that means your videos, your photos, the way you talk and the way that you present yourself, if it's all in one fluid motion, then you're gonna keep, you're gonna keep moving with that and people are gonna start acclimating and, and, and start gravitating towards that. And I think that that's how you kind of create a following and you just remain consistent and you keep doing it over and over again. Okay, again, we're more philosophical right now than we are practical. I haven't really told you about any of this stuff, but uh, for the, again, preliminaries, once you get all that down, I guess one nice thing to do is to just get familiar with performing. So start performing for maybe your families, for, for your families and for your friends, and do it just for the experience, you know? But then as time goes on, start, start small, like birthday parties or whatnot. Now, I am not condoning fire spitting at all uh, unless you have absolute confidence in your abilities and you're insured and no matter what you do if, if you're performing for someone and you are accepting money make sure that you have all your paperwork and your knowledge covered first you don't want to jump the gun on some things that could end up hurting someone or even killing someone it's super important because especially with our art if we're using weapons if we're, if we're spinning around with weapons or if we're spinning around with flaming weapons or blade weapons or whatever you can only afford one accident and it's you're all done so safety's got to be like huge <laughs> so but yeah um you're gonna have all this into consideration and then you're gonna just you're gonna go you're gonna start small probably just like how most musicians start like they're doing their little late night diners you know and they'll be playing they're getting experience being in front of people and that's good and that's gonna bring up their confidence and it's gonna bring up their their bigger stage persona so you start small and you keep building your way up and up and up and up and up and that's kind of where it goes how much money do you charge what do you set it maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later but um, when you first start, I think it's really important to get the experience so you can sell, you can sell the character and the image that you need to be. You know, like Rome wasn't built in a day and neither will this. This is a very, you're in it for the long run. And if you're in it for the long run, keep your eyes far, far away and keep focusing on, on bringing that. 
So I think, I hope that helps. Uh, again, this is a new format. I really wanted to talk about how to start it. I guess I didn't really tell you anything about um, the process because the process is like 200 times bigger than this and there's no right or wrong way. There's so many different ways to approach it. But I do think that having the right mindset and approaching it in the right way is so important before you even take that first step because that's going to save you so much time in the long run that you're going to eventually have to learn either way. So I hope this helps and yeah, message me if you have any questions. If you like this series or if you want more lectures, let me know and I'll do more talks on this. I personally feel like this is really important because making money doing your passion is like the ultimate support and the more you know, the more support you can have, the more you can create bigger dreams and better things. And and then you can inspire more people. So I've I've always felt like I feel like that it's it's definitely a tough thing though, and you gotta really like learn how to like just keep getting up after you get knocked down and that can be really challenging. But man, so worth it. So worth it. So hope you guys are well. Let me know what you think. Uh and again, you know, like, subscribe, share this video, and yeah, talk to y'all soon.